Buongiorno e ben arrivati a tutti quanti per seguire queste, questa sessione mh, dedicata a questa piattaforma educational. Vi ricordo che durerà un'ora circa e verrà comunque registrata, quindi poi vi gireremo nei giorni successivi la registrazione se vi siete persi qualche informazione. Allora, anzitutto mi presento, mi chiamo Simone Proletti, sono il capo area nord-ovest di Lerd Italia. Oggi mi trovate qua in veste di oratore sull'argomento per una prima parte, per poi lasciare spazio ai nostri colleghi svedesi. Allora, ok Luca, possiamo procedere? La collaborazione tra l'ERD e l'Italia, vi faccio una mh, piccola anticipazione di quello che è stato, e Sectra è nata circa tre anni fa, voluta dalla necessità di fare network tra aziende che avessero un fine comune, quale è appunto la formazione e la simulazione medica. Vai Luca! Sectra è un'azienda svedese nata una quarantina di anni fa, l'acronimo è Secure Transmission, e si occupa principalmente di sistemi criptati per telecomunicazioni, uno dei loro maggiori clienti è per esempio la Nato. Si occupano, si occupano anche di imaging IT. Vai Luca, l'azienda è conosciuta soprattutto per i sistemi PAX. Il PAX, per chi non lo conosce, è un sistema di archivazione e trasmissione di immagini utilizzati oramai in tutto il mondo. Eh, aspettiamo che l'ultimo arrivato zittisca anche lui il microfono. Vi chiedo gentilmente di zittire il microfono, se no lo faccio io. Ecco, l'ho fatto io. <ride> Dal lontano 2013 oramai il PAX di Sectra è riconosciuto come uno dei migliori sistemi PAX per soddisfazione al cliente. Dall'esperienza di Sectra nel mondo dell'imaging IT e delle comunicazioni sicure appunto, è nata questa nuova piattaforma, la soluzione per Medical Educational, come dicono Perfetto Luca. Ora lascio appunto la parola, introduco l'italianissimo Luca Conti, che è il market area manager di Sectra, che Salve ci racconterà, tutti. buongiorno Luca, un po' più nel dettaglio quali sono i vantaggi della piattaforma Sectra. Prima di però passare la parola a Luca, vi ricordo che il terminale che state vedendo in questo momento e che vedremo oggi è disponibile anche per essere visto e visionato, toccato con mano presso la nostra sede di Bologna. Se avete delle domande, scrivete pure nella chat che trovate qui a lato di Team, faremo in modo di rispondere alle vostre domande se riusciamo in tempo reale. In alternativa ci date un paio di giorni e riceverete una mail riassuntiva con le risposte e anche il video. A questo punto direi che lascio la parola a Luca per il continuo della webinar. Ciao Luca, a te la linea. Grazie Simone. Dunque, innanzitutto grazie a tutti per il vostro interesse. E una delle peculiarità eh, della nostra soluzione per la medical education è rappresentata da eh, un sistema cloud sicuro, l'Education Portal, che rappresenta un network eh, mondiale di tutti gli utenti Sectra in cui possono essere condivisi casi clinici di interesse per la medical education. Eh, il cloud sicuro nasce proprio dall'esperienza di Sectra, come ha anticipato Simone, nelle trasmissioni sicure e, e nei sistemi criptati. Il cloud eh, può essere, il contenuto del cloud può essere visualizzato o attraverso i terminali Sectra, abbiamo due terminali, il tavolo Sectra, eh, che è quello che vedrete oggi e che è presente anche a Bologna, presso la sede Lairdal, che ha una diagonale di 65 pollici, un touchscreen capacitivo, eh, quindi molto più accurato rispetto ad altri sistemi, e una risoluzione 4K e, e un movimento motorizzato dello schermo. E abbiamo la Sectra Board, che è più grande, 86 pollici, comunque una risoluzione 4K e un touchscreen capacitivo anche in questo caso. 
Ovviamente essendo un cloud il contenuto può essere anche eh, mostrato attraverso una workstation o, o un laptop con determinati requisiti hardware, quindi in questo caso diciamo che eh, sia da un terminale Sectra che da una workstation o un laptop eh, con, con determinati requisiti hardware attraverso una licenza insegnante quello che il docente può fare è eh, fare dissezioni virtuali, ovviamente aprire immagini, creare le proprie lezioni il tutto sfruttando il contenuto del cloud. E quello che si può fare, e anche e vi mostrerò più in dettaglio in seguito, ma quello che si può fare è importare casi all'interno del cloud e decidere se renderli pubblici per tutta la comunità o tenerli eh, per la propria istituzione. E li, questo, I casi possono essere importati o da un terminale Sectra o da una workstation connessa comunque a internet e quindi allacciata al cloud. Quindi di fatto avere un terminale e avere differenti workstation rappresenta diciamo, un modo di costruire un network per la medical education in cui per esempio il tavolo si trova in una stanza, il docente, un altro docente può trovarsi ad esempio in un altro campus e quindi eh, possono essere tutti allacciati nel cloud. Gli studenti, d'altro canto, possono accedere al contenuto del cloud attraverso qualsiasi dispositivo mobile, che sia uno smartphone, un tablet o un computer, senza nessuna distinzione tra eh, Android, Apple, Windows o Mac, e, e possono accedere al contenuto del cloud, quindi da casa, eh, fondamentalmente in maniera illimitata durante la sottoscrizione al cloud, quindi eh, possono aprire i casi quando vogliono. Tutti i casi che gli studenti possono aprire sono anonimizzati e inoltre gli studenti non hanno accesso a modificare i contenuti che sono stati creati dai docenti. Questo è molto importante perché eh, diciamo, non possono andare ad intaccare il lavoro che avete fatto voi, magari per creare una lezione, ma possono soltanto visualizzarlo. Quindi, come ho detto, eh, l'Education Portal è una soluzione cloud che raccoglie una vasta libreria di casi, è in continua espansione, eh, ovviamente la collaborazione e il network costruito da Sectra fa sì che quello che si acquista oggi eh, in termini di contenuti si espande eh, continuamente mano a mano che gli altri utenti condividono casi all'interno della rete. E, mh, è accessibile da qualsiasi dispositivo connesso ad internet, ci sono aggiornamenti periodici del sistema durante la sottoscrizione al servizio, quindi non viene soltanto eh, aumentato il contenuto, ma vengono anche introdotte nuove funzionalità periodicamente. E comporta un'amministrazione IT minima, praticamente viene rilasciato istantaneamente, la distribuzione è istantanea e è molto semplice diciamo, eh, l'accesso, basta essere connessi ad internet e avere o una licenza insegnante o una licenza studente. E più in dettaglio, come vi ho accennato precedentemente, l'Education Portal è costituito da quello che noi chiamiamo spazio privato e spazio pubblico. Nello spazio privato possono essere importati i propri casi, può essere importato ogni tipo di file DICOM se su, senza nessun bisogno di conversione intermedia, quindi può essere salvato all'interno del cloud. E in quel modo, nello spazio privato, i casi sono visibili all'interno della propria istituzione. Quindi, ad esempio, due differenti campus anche dislocati in parti diverse, eh, territorialmente parlando, eh, connessi al cloud, possono vedere il contenuto dello spazio privato. Se eh, l'utente decide di condividere magari i casi eh, che ritiene di particolare rilevanza con il resto della comunità mondiale, in quel caso i casi vengono inviati allo spazio pubblico. In questo caso eh, il tutto viene eh, reso anonimo da Sectra e non tracciabile ovviamente per questioni di privacy. Allo stesso modo, eh, se in uno, un ospedale universitario può essere connesso all'Education Portal. E possiamo fare una connessione direttamente al, al sistema PAX dell'ospedale, non importa che sia Sectra o, o di un altro venditore, e con un clic i casi possono essere inviati nell'Education Portal e possono essere eh, resi anonimi eh, in maniera automatica. A quel punto diciamo che i casi possono essere visualizzati come, abbiamo, come ho descritto prima, attraverso i vari sistemi di licenze insegnante o licenze studente. In termini di contenuto, il mio collega Enric, che è il nostro application specialist, vi mostrerà più in dettaglio eh, quello che vi sto dicendo adesso. Comunque abbiamo, praticamente in termini di contenuto, andiamo dal micro al macro. Quindi eh, copriamo la medical education and clinical training, e abbiamo casi di anatomia, radiologia, eh, embriologia, istologia, 
abbiamo aggiunto eh, pochi mesi fa citologia, e vari tipi di patologie, abbiamo anche casi di veterinaria, abbiamo diversi casi e diversi animali collezionati all'interno del portale e il tutto è disponibile nel cloud. Now I'm going to introduce my colleague Eric Gadde, Application Specialist at Sectra, that will show us more in detail the solution. Grazie. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Henrik Gadde and like uh, Luca said, I'm um, application specialist here at Sectra. I have a background in physiotherapy and I've also done uh, anatomy teaching within uh, the muscular and skeletal system. Today I will show you uh, our three softwares, of course, the education portal, where we have the uh, public space where all the cases are and also the private space where you can upload your own cases. And I will also show you Human Anatomy Atlas, which I think is a real good uh, software for uh, your reference anatomy, your uh, digital clinical uh, anatomy guide, and also the virtual human dissector, which is, uh, like the name says, a virtual uh, dissector. Uh, the goal of this presentation is to uh, uh, find ways to help you to develop and enhance both your anatomy or uh, medical teaching on site and your remotely teaching. Since uh, it's possible to download Teams as we have done now on the table, or you can use Zoom or Google Meet, you're able to share the screen with the students. So everything that I will show you on the screen could be shared uh, by you as a teacher to your students. Uh, and we also have uh, UniView, our uh, student platform where the students can log in to uh, their uh, login and see the cases. So I will show you uh, how that works. Great, let's start. And I will start with Human Anatomy Atlas, which is your uh, reference anatomy guide, your digital anatomy book, so to speak. Uh, and this goes with the table. Uh, it's an uh, add-on software. And what you see when you start this uh, software is uh, the main menu that consists of use, quizzes, tours, favorites, and note cards. That means that you can create, uh, the, sorry, there are pre-made quizzes with all the human anatomy system. You can create your own tours, which is uh, basically where you save your favorite, your uh, images or how you prepare an anatomy model, save that in tours and then you have your lesson or your lecture prepared. So let's see what it looks like. Uh, let's start with systems. Here we have all the different anatomy systems and uh, we can start with uh, the full skeleton like this. You can interact fully with the image, zoom in and zoom out. You can pan the image and you can rotate the image like this. Then we can add on from the different systems in the body. This time I will add on muscles like this. And let's tap on a muscle, a pectoralis major muscle, for example. Here in this square, we can tap on the book and we have some information about the muscle. Tap on the stethoscope, and we will find the different pathologies that comes with this muscle. We can have it uh, pronounced if we press on loudspeaker, and we can also check the attachments, the origins, and uh, the insertions. So let's look at that. Or we move on to the origins. And we can walk all the way through the different origins uh, of the muscle. And this goes, of course, with all the muscles in the body. We can also look at the blood supply for this certain muscle. We can tap on the muscle to be able to read more about the axillary artery, read more about it. And we can look at the innervation and what kind of uh, nerve supply this muscle uh, has. Let's look at the muscle function, and there we have recordings to look at, in this case, the shoulder flexion. 
and the shoulder extension. So these are a few things that you can do when it comes to the muscular system. We can also search the body by regions like this. Let's, for example, look at the abdominal region. And here we can tap on a structure and then we can read about it like we've seen before. We can choose to hide that uh, organ and tap on the one underneath. And in this case, it's the uh, ilium. We can read about that. We can look at the pathologies and we can uh, hide that away as well. And then we can work our way in, uh, into the body and look at the different organs and the different tissues and structures. And of course, we can add on different uh, uh, structures from the system menu to the left. We also have uh, cross sections. Let's have a look at the uh, number four thorax region. And what happens here is that we have this axial cut where we can zoom in, zoom out. We can pan the image. <coughs> Sorry. And we can compare the model to real human tissue. In this case, it's a CT scan. We can add on pins to highlight certain uh, important areas. And when I tap on a pin here on the uh, CT scan image, that will also be shown on the model to the left. So the right ventricle, the intervertical septum, the aorta, and as you can see, that's highlighted also in the, in the model area. If we want to change from CT scan to cadaver, we press here. And then we can see the same region, uh, but in a, a cadaver image with the same pins as well. And this goes with all the, all the body uh, as well. Like I said, uh, there are also quizzes. So we can have, um, we can choose from what area we would like to, uh, to have the quiz. Look at the shoulder joint again. Select the right or left supraspinatus muscle. And when you tap on that one and press submit, we get the answer if it's correct or if it's wrong. And this goes also with uh, uh, all the body, all the different systems in the body, like this. You can only see the screen you're sharing. Okay. Uh, good. So, like you, uh, I've, I've showed you the cross sections. And if I tap to the right of cross sections, it says census. So there is also a division of uh, uh, the different senses here. And we have uh, all the muscle actions to the right of senses also collected in, uh, uh, in a category. So we can easily uh, tap on that to, for example, look at the hip adu adu uh, abduction to see what that looks like. So this is a, a really nice uh, digital anatomy book for you to use as a reference material to uh, search for uh, different, uh, sorry, to search for all the structures in the body and uh, be able to, um, uh, to see how the structures are oriented uh, with each other. Great. One more thing I would just like to highlight here is the TORS. Uh, it's on, on the top menu in the middle. When we press TORS, we have, you can create your own, own TOR by saving, uh, saving images or shortcuts to a specific part of a model. Let's press Brain TOR here. So this is saved. This image is saved as a favorite. And you can, of course, interact with it. 
and you can tap on the muscle to read about it. And then you press the right arrow to go to the next slide. And this could be any slide within uh, this software. So you can, uh, in a tour, you can move from very superficial uh, structures and going deeper and deeper, for example, and have everything prepared for your lecture. Great, that was uh, what I was about to uh, talk you, to you uh, about when it comes to Human Anatomy Atlas. And uh, I will be happy to go deeper within the software if you'd like later on. Now let's go to the virtual dissector, human virtual dissector, which is, uh, as it says, a virtual dissector tool. A very powerful one. This is based on real anatomy, real cadaver. And uh, the screen, like uh, you, you see now, can be shared with your students. So this could be performed on the table and shared with Teams or Zoom to, uh, uh, for the students that are not available uh, around the table for them to see it also at home. Uh, to the right, we have a pane uh, named Online Lessons. And here we have uh, a lot of different lessons, pre-made lessons. And uh, for example, we have a cadaver dissection guide, which is, which is a full dissection guide, full body dissection guide. It goes through the full body with uh, images of a, from a real dissection correlated to the 3D model. So the, the muscles will be marked on the model and also on the left pane on the cross sections. So you will interact between the 3D model and images and explaining text on how to do a cadaver dissection guide. And later on, if you like, uh, at this point, at this time or another time, I, I would, have, would be happy to go deeper into these different lessons. But there are quite a few of them and they're, they're really nice. But now I will close this uh, right pane like this and we will focus on the 3D model and the cross sections and I think that one uh, one advantage of the uh, virtual dissection tool is that you can uh, you can start with nothing of course you can do the dissection over and over again which is not possible with a real cadaver but you can also start with nothing and build build on with the structures that you want to talk about. And that's what I'm planning to do right now. So first of all, I will press anatomy down at the uh, bottom toolbar. And this is uh, uh, also an index search. So uh, at the top of this um, uh, anatomy index search, you, ha you have this search bar where you can type any structure and that will uh, be uh, marked on the uh, 3D model. But Right now, I will press on the cross, hide all. Like that, so everything disappears. And then I will start with, I press on the system button, and I will start with a skeletal system. And the axial skeleton, like this. And let's say we want to focus on the lungs and the heart and uh, how these uh, structures are related to each other. I will press on the scalpel tool down at the bottom bar and I will remove the sternum and I will rem also remove some, uh, some ribs here to have a better look. So let's do that on the left side. And then we can of course uh, zoom in. It's a really nice resolution on this image uh, on this model uh, then I will add the heart so I go back to my uh, anatomy index search and look for the cardiovascular system and add the heart sorry hmm. now it's right like this we have the heart added and we can see the exact position of where the heart is located uh, in the thorax region like that. Now we uh, would like to add on uh, a cross section 
So I will add on, press on the cross section and add on the transverse cross section line. So here we can see the different tissues that are surrounding the heart. And to make this even more real, we will add on uh, opacities and skin. <coughs> like this. Now we have, uh, we know where the heart is and we know uh, what level of the body the heart is and we can see the surrounding uh, structures. And by scrolling on the uh, axial cut on the top left thing, we can uh, scroll our way through the body like this with a cross section cut. Okay, from here we want to add on organs. We can do that in another way than just go through the uh, anatomy index tool that I open up here. Let's close this one and tap on the highlight tool down at the bottom bar. And then we can start by uh, tapping on the, uh, the different tissues surrounding the heart to see what, what is uh, what is surrounding what sorry like that to see what different organs or structures are surrounding the heart. Now we have the lungs on the left side and we can rotate and look from any angle and direction what that how that appears. And we can add on the lungs on the right side as well by tapping on the model. I mean, any of the three uh, cuts to the left, we can uh, tap there to add on also the lungs on the right side. So this is one way of uh, uh, working with the different organs and uh, working with uh, uh, different ways of uh, adding uh, tissues and organs to the body. Now we can change the position of the model in to keep it in a more real way when you do a, a, a cadaver dissection, but then we need to change the cross section here from transverse to coronal like this. And then in the lower left pane, we can change the level of the cut like this. And of course, by tapping on any structure here, we can add on organs, like the intestines, for example. And then we can see how they uh, how they appear. Let's add on the um, the nervous system, like this, which is also very detailed and uh, easy to to follow and understand when looking at it this way. So we can see, and you can add on, of course, the uh, different uh, uh, arteries and veins as well. Here, and let's see, we want to know what muscles are surrounding the brachial plexa when it's uh, uh, on the upper arm like this. On the top of the screen, you can see biceps brachii, right? So we can see the name of the tissues that we are tapping on. So we know what kind of structure we are dealing with here. And of course, we can dissect through the different structures as well. Let's move inside the heart, for example. So we can re remove different uh, structures of, uh, uh, of every organ. So these are a few ways of uh, how to interact with uh, the 3D model, the VHD uh, virtual human dissector. And uh, uh, one of the main advantages with this is to see the students gathering around the table, starting to discuss and having conversations about the organs and how they are related to each other and how they are connected. But like I said, with uh, 
a third party software like Teams or Zoom, you can also share this with your students uh, if they are home by their computer or, uh, or iPad with an internet connection. Then uh, I would also uh, like to mention that you can save bookmarks here as well. So you can, if you think this, this particular view uh, is interesting, you can save this as a bookmark so you can open up this exact position later and you can start interact with it uh, in this way as well. So that's a good way of preparing your, your lessons. Now let's go to let's go to education portal, Sectra's uh, own portal of uh, uh, clinical cases within different medical systems, such as, uh, like Lucas said, histology uh, made with uh, uh, different modalities like CT, MR. Uh, we have some veterinary cases, cytology, embryology, uh, and some orthopedic cases. So we have a lot of different medical cases to work with here. And I would like to start with uh, a great uh, cadaver uh, category. And these are cases that we have uh, done with a collaboration uh, together with the Monash University in Australia. So we have 50 cases like this. This is just one case. We have 50 cases like this, which in a very detailed way will show you uh, for mostly, um, like I will show you, mostly nervous uh, structures, uh, veins, muscles, and so on, soft tissue. Uh, and we will look at the different bookmarks here, and I will show you this one. So these cadavers have been um, uh, dissected and segmented and we are, they have used very high dose radiation. So the images are very, uh, uh, very detailed. And for example, when I taught anatomy, I find it sometimes quite hard to visualize the brachial plexa. And on this model that uh, focus on the central nervous system, I think it's it shows really nice. And it's also fascinating to know that this is real anatomy. This is not a computerized 3D model. This is real anatomy. And it's uh, I think it's really easy to understand what the, the nervous system looks like when you see it this way. Everything is labeled, but you can tap uh, on a label and hide all text if you want this to be part of a, a quiz or a test. Uh, we can also use this global illumination tool to change the shadows to improve the depth of the bill, uh, of the image so we really can get advantage of the 3D uh, the 3D vision here. And like you, as you can see, this is focused on the central nervous system. We have, uh, there are other cases that focus on uh, the brain or the upper and lower limbs, the extremities and the, the front part of the body and so on. So 50 cases like this, uh, very detailed uh, cadavers like this to, to work with. We also have uh, this cadaver. The full female body, a multiple trauma case. First of all, we have the CT stack, and this goes with every case and every CT case, of course. And everything that I will show you here that is on the public uh, public cloud, public space. All of this will happen in the same way with the CT stacks, the DICOM files that you upload to your own private space. So this is not something that just goes with the sector cases. This goes with all 
of your cases that you are uh, uploading. We are able to uh, we are able to interact with uh, 2D images as well. We can annotate, we can make measurements, as you can see. We can change window level. Uh, so there are different ways of interacting also with the CT stack. But now let's go to 3D. So this is what the case looks like in 3D. And from here, we also have different, different tools to work with in the 3D, uh, with the 3D model. For example, we can click on the palette, which gives us a different options of um, uh, different options uh, of color presets. So let's uh, take one on the, uh, on the top in the middle called muscle to focus on muscle tissue. So this is how we can, depending on what we want to see, we can change the color preset and focus on, since this is based on the hand field scale, we can change the color preset depending on the tissue's uh, density. So this is the muscles, for example. I would also like to show you uh, more tools that goes with uh, all the cases here in, in uh, the Sectra Education Portal. And I would like uh, right now to show you a heart case. <clears throat> Again, of course, we have the CT stack that you can scroll through and you can pan and zoom. But let's again go to the 3D model. And <clears throat> we have different tools that we can work with. <clears throat> we have the three packs. I showed you the palette that can change the color preset. And I will now show you the scalpel. I tap on the scalpel and drag on the line with the other finger. And then we remove structures and we have created a cut line on the uh, uh, on the image or on the model. Let's say we want to look inside the heart here. Then we need to change the color preset again. So I tap on the palette and open up organ one. So from here we can actually look inside the heart, see the valves like this. And since this is a uh, these are all DICOM images. This is a high resolution screen. It really looks amazing. And we can also change the cut plane by tapping and holding on the scalpel and with three fingers, move them vertically on the screen or with one finger moving it, then we can look inside the heart from another angle like this. We can also make annotations on the 3D model like this, and we can also name them, have them labeled. Great. That's another feature that goes with uh, all the CT cases in uh, uh, Education Portal. You can save, if you, if you create an image you like, you can save it as uh, uh, a bookmark. And we have created a lot of great, great bookmarks for you to use in your uh, medical training. This case is a peripheral vascular case with uh, an aorta aneurysm. So let's go to 3D. And here we can focus on the aorta aneurysm, and let's say you want to see how that looks like in, uh, uh, compare that in the 2D views. First of all, if you have your, if you have your le lecture and you want, to, you want the students to know exact what uh, structure you're interested in, you look at the bottom of the screen where it says lock screen, you tap there, and then you're able to, oops, sorry, I missed the button, obviously. 
lock screen like that. And now you can make annotations on the screen that will fade away. Or if you tap on the fade button to unmark it, the uh, annotations will uh, remain until you press clear or lock screen again like that. Now let's look at this aneurysm and uh, we want to have it, uh, we want to see what it looks like on the 2D images as well. So I will double tap on the aneurysm with one finger and when that's done the exact position is shown on the three uh, different cross sections, which means it's easy to correlate where this uh, is about on the, uh, on the, in the body, when you can see it both in axial view, in the sagittal view, and in the coronal view. And if you scroll through the uh, axial cut, you can see how the, uh, the aorta gets more dilated like that. So I think that's a, a really good feature when it comes to teaching uh, anatomy. I have a few more cases that I'd like to share with you. And for uh, embryology, This is what the, uh, uh, all the embryology cases are built up like. So there is uh, uh, active, uh, interactive PDF where you can uh, look at the model. You can choose to with the uh, squares. If you press on a white square, everything will disappear. And then you can add on by tapping on the dark gray scale. Uh, squares like this. You can add on to the to the model. And we have histology slices that you can scroll through with every embryology case. And we also have it as a CT stack, which also can be 3D rendered. And let's look at one um, bookmark that Sectra has created. A label bookmark, we press apply bookmark, and then we can uh, actually see this as a 3D model with everything uh, labeled like this. And that goes with all the embryology cases. We can reserve a few minutes at the end to show the terminal with the webcam. Yeah, sure. Next case is, I have just a few cases left now. Uh, this one is um, MR case done with a seven, seven Tesla. And this is uh, really awesome. Also with created bookmarks. This is really awesome to when you teach uh, brain anatomy. And the cut is already made here. So by holding on the scalpel and moving with three fingers vertically, we can scroll through the brain. We can change the cut plane into a sagittal one by using one finger. And then with three fingers, we can change the cut plane like this. And if there is uh, a certain point in the, uh, uh, in the image that is interesting to know where it is, you can double tap. Double tap, and that area will show on the three different MPRs like that. For the final images, cytology and histology, I would like uh, also to present our feature view sharing. So what I've done here is to log in. I've, sh I've split the screen. So the left part is my uh, iPad or my computer, and the right part is a student's computer. So we have logged in to what is called Uniview, which is uh, the student's way of accessing the cases remotely. 
where you can see 3D models as uh, rotational stacks. You can interact with all the CT stacks and um, uh, you can uh, uh, make annotations and measurements, but they won't be saved. But uh, you can do it and take a screenshot and send to your, to your teacher or professor, for example. So let's go to the same case. Uh, we will go to a cytology case named C001. And we'll search for that here. And the same goes with the other case. So now I'm on a student, uh, student iPad or smartphone or computer. We open up the cases. Looks the same. Go to images. Go to images like this. So first of all, since uh, this is cytology, I will now open up the uh, uh, a, a pap smear, uh, pap smear image, and I will zoom in here. And since this is cytology, we also have the C scroll function. So with three fingers on the screen, I can scroll through the different focal layers like this. So. And as a teacher, I want to show that for, uh, for my students. So we could have 50 students or one student logged in at uh, the same case. And when you tap on the group icon and move the slide bar of view sharing to on, we do that uh, in the same image. We'll go to perhaps, yeah, like this. Now we can see that two people are watching the same image in the same case. So the demo, the student will tap on, uh, it will tap on the eye to follow the teacher, which means that the teacher to the left is doing things on the screen. And that is, so that, that all that happens automatically with the students as well. Like this. So instantly, every move that the teacher does uh, happens in uh, the, the student's computer as well, even the C scroll like that. So let's go to another case. I will check out, uh, log out and log in with my own account here. Sorry for that. I... Here. Great, I will go to histology case. And also here. Now the teacher is uh, great. And this. Teacher is to the left. So when things are done on the left screen, everything will appear on the right screen. 
even when you make uh, annotation like an arrow or so, that will appear instantly on the right screen, which is the student's eye screen, uh, screen. And that could be several students. And this goes without sharing the screen. Uh, so this is uh, uh, something that is built in into Uniview, which means that you as a teacher can uh, teach uh, all the histology and all the cytology cases like this uh, remotely or on, on distance without sharing the screen of the table or a, or a computer. It's done within the, within the software. And we know that it's very uh, appreciated. And also I would like to finish off by saying that uh, there is also a function in Education Portal called Stories, which means you can build your own lectures in advance uh, and, and like in the other softwares, it's not just an image, it's a shortcut to a specific part of a case. So you can create bookmarks, uh, you can label cases, you can make uh, cuts or change the color presets and save everything in a story. And uh, that will be saved for your next uh, lecture. Uh, so it's very easy to prepare and easy to have everything set up uh, to save time and be effective and for students to interact with on the sector table. OK, thank you very much. We can show the terminal. Perhaps it's yeah. five minutes left. Yeah. We need to unplug from here. Yeah. Have the teams. Yeah. Okay, okay. Nella, nella parte finale ci facciamo una panoramica sul, uh, sull'hardware. E fondamentalmente, come vi ho detto, questo è, è uno dei due terminali che abbiamo: la risoluzione è 4K e la diagonale è 65 pollici. E lo schermo è motorizzato. Quindi può essere spostato in altezza per accomodare eh, studenti e professori di diverse, di diverse altezze. Può essere messo sia in orizzontale che in verticale, quindi può essere messo come un tavolo con gli studenti intorno o può essere messo in verticale con gli studenti davanti. E, e adesso non c'è molto spazio qui disponibile per farvi vedere, ma è comunque montato su ruote. Quindi può essere trasportato. Okay. Il touchscreen, come vi ho detto, è capacitivo, quindi ha un diverso, diciamo che ha una risoluzione che ha 12 punti, quindi ha una risoluzione, eh, oltre alla risoluzione c'è anche la sensi sensibilità del touchscreen che è molto superiore rispetto ad altri sistemi. L'altro terminale appunto eh, non è dotato di ruote, quindi eh, è inteso eh, per essere attaccato al muro, fondamentalmente per, per ampie classi di studenti, 86 pollici di diagonale, ma è comunque 4K, è un touchscreen eh, con la stessa tecnologia del touchscreen che ha questo. Il terminale può essere connesso comunque al, a un proiettore esterno, è dotato di uscita HDMI e porta display. E, questo è fondamentalmente come si presenta l'hardware. Ecco Luca, mi senti? Sì. Ecco, noi abbiamo visto diverse immagini. Eh, ricordo bene che ci sono anche immagini eh, prese dalla veterinaria, quindi eh, risonanze TAC possono essere utilizzate in questo caso per acquisire qualsiasi tipo di immagine, quindi... Nell'Education nell Portal può essere importato qualsiasi tipo di file DICOM, quindi non, non c'è distinzione fondamentalmente. Viene importato e la cosa importante è che arriva direttamente nel vostro spazio privato, quindi non è che se importate un caso nel, nel cloud viene con, eh, condiviso con tutti gli utenti in tutto il mondo, rimane comunque disponibile solo per voi, a meno che noi, voi non vogliate condividerlo. Ok, forse ehm, avete già preparato anche delle stories all'interno 
ehm, della piattaforma, ho visto che ho sentito che Henrik ne ha accennato l'utilizzo, però mh, non ce l'ha fatto vedere, riesci a farlo vedere anche... Mm. Um... Right. Your stories, yeah. Assolutamente, è una funzione che abbiamo, che abbiamo introdotto in, uno, in una delle release appunto che, sono, che vengono fatte frequentemente della, del sistema, Adesso Eric vi mostra eh, come si presenta e eh, alcune delle storie che sono presenti sul terminale. Ecco, a questo punto se puoi condividerci lo schermo della tavola, così vediamo meglio, perché se no siamo troppo lontani. Grazie. Grazie. Yeah. So. So okay. there is okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, first, I will show you uh, what a story can look like. Uh, there is a stories button to the right that you can see is highlighted right now, where all the stories will be saved. And I will open up a um, uh, story that my colleague Maria has done, Basic Anatomy, just to show the different features of it. So this is uh, what it looks like uh, when you're about to edit a story. We can tap on the edit mode. So uh, this is an example story where we have three different cases and you can choose to change the order of the cases by uh, holding and then drag, like drag and drop to change the order of the different slides. We can add on text in the different uh, text boxes uh, and we can choose to uh, copy text or duplicate uh, a story image or delete it. Uh, so this is uh, in the, the uh, edit mode. Now let's uh, cancel the save I did, the change I did and go to play. So this is what the story looked like. So Mar Maria has saved different uh, different cases. This one is the S039, like I said. You can interact with the case like this. And to the right, you can see what is, um, what is written in the, uh, on the, in the notes area, and you can choose to hide that if it's uh, for a test. And we also have a preview slide bar uh, to, where you can change and go to different story slides. So either you uh, tap on the arrow to the right next to the number three to go to the next slide, or you can scroll through the slide bar to go to which slide you prefer. prefer. And of course you can interact with the different cases in a story. So let me show you how to create a story. This is what it looks like. And now I will go to uh, a case named S052. And I will open up that one. I will 3D render it. And from here, I'll, I'll, I'm interested in uh, looking at the uh, joint surface of the calcaneus bone. So I will uh, do a bone segmentation here, which means I will save the calcaneus bone by tapping and holding on that bone and then drag on all the other structures like this and then press cut. And now that's the only thing. This could be done with all the cases, of course. And we can also add the MPR function here, so we can double tap anywhere to see where that location is. Now, this is something I want to add to a story. So I press Add to Story, the button Add to Story, and I will be asked if I want to create a new story. Yes. And the title, which is mandatory, is written up here. So let's call this May 26 is this story. Here I can write notes. I, I have uh, enough room here to write an abstract if I like. 
Otherwise, we just save and close like this. Maybe I'm interested in also in this story, just showing uh, the CT stack of the same case, this one. So I will add uh, also uh, in the right menu, it says add to story. Press there, add to story. And I will be able to uh, save this also to a story. And let's see where we can find. May 26 down there. Great. So add to this story. Now I have two slides added to the story. And let's say I also uh, uh, save and close, sorry. And I would also like a histology case to this story. Let's say we want to build a, a, a case that uh, shows same same structures, but with different modalities. For example, this is not the same modality, but uh, it's an uh, it could be used in that way. Now let's go to the right menu again and look for the button Add to Story. Tap there, and it will be added to the May 26 again. Add to this story. Now we have three slides, and we can go on like this and add both CT stacks. We can add. Um, uh, CT stacks, we can add uh, uh, histology cases, so we can add different um, uh, 3D model, models. And uh, as you see, the thing that appears in the story is the exact image that we uh, uh, saved to the story. And you can start interacting with it here as well. So it's not just a screenshot, it's the actual case that you are guided to. And if you start working with the case here and then uh, exit the story, the next time you will open the story, it will be as it was saved the first time. So you can do anything with the story, but it will not be saved in the story. You can, sorry, you can do anything with the case, but it will not be saved in the story. The next time you will open up the story, it will appear in the same way as you created it. Quindi fondamentalmente per concludere con, con la funzione storie quello che potete fare è creare una sorta di PowerPoint con i casi che volete. Quello che fanno la maggior parte degli utenti è creare una storia per ogni lezione e, e in questo modo davanti agli studenti non dovete cercare i, i singoli casi, li avete già pronti e come, nella maniera in cui volete mostrarli agli studenti, quindi, quindi sono già lì pronti. Ci sono altre domande? In questo momento Luca non ci sono domande, ricordiamo però a tutti quanti che se ce ne fossero eh, siamo a completa disposizione, eh, quindi i contatti li avete, fatecele pure avere le domande. Vi ricordo per l'ennesima volta che la tavola è visionabile presso il nostro quartier generale a Bologna. Spero che questa webinar sia servita a voi per conoscere meglio il prodotto e a noi per farlo conoscere un po' a tutti. E a questo punto Luca se non hai nulla da aggiungere possiamo terminare qua. Che dici? Sì, possiamo terminare. We can do that here.